Welcome to the 8th video in Mobidax tutorial series How to deploy a centralized cryptocurrency trading platform using open source software Aside from this series as a whole, this seems to be the most anticipated individual video we ever released with this video, Mobidux.io team will make the first step to open sourcing a Hummingbot connector for PCO OpenDAX. Everyone who follows the simple instructions in the link titled Mobidux Hummingbot Giveaway will be added to our GitLab repo for unlimited access and usage of this connector. Unlimited strategies, unlimited pairs. There is an important message at the end of the video, but first let's get down to business. In this video, I will show you how to deploy Hummingbot for your cryptocurrency trading platform, how to launch this bot and set up a pre-existing market maker strategy to create trading activity on your platform. Alright, so the first thing we have to do here in order to actually activate our Hummingbot is to create an API key uh, for, for, uh, for our Hummingbot instance. Since Hummingbot is a uh, talking to the API, not the UI side of things, we actually need to create an API key for a bot user on our platform. I'm just going to use one of the admins account. So in order to create an API key, what you have to do is you have to enable 2FA first. So let's do just that. I have a very neat extension right here for my Google Chrome, so I can actually add my 2FA entry right here, which is great. All right, so I did enable my 2FA right here. So now you can just create an API key like so. So the process is very simple. Uh, what you do is you copy your 2FA from the app, you enter it here, you hit confirm, and there you have it. This is your API key. Now we have to save these two because we're going to use them in the next part of the video where we actually start up the bot. So let's save this in a, in a safe place and make sure no one has access to this. Now, next thing we have to do is we have to make sure that this bot user we're going to be using uh, API keys with, we have to make sure that it has some balance in order to create some orders. And for that, if we now go to our wallet, we can see that this user has no balance. So there are a couple of ways you can give it balance to this user. The main way that you have to do it is that you have to deposit some BTC or Ethereum onto this account. Uh, and for USD, you have to uh, hold it to make sure that you can provide the liquidity. And through the platform, you can actually create an adjustment and just uh, programmatically add balance to this particular user. So that's what we're going to do right now. So uh, in order to do so, we have to go to Tower, which is our admin panel. And uh, we have to go to Accountings and Adjustments. We also have an alternative to this Tower admin panel that is called Setter. And you can watch the video about Setter in the pop-up banner up there. But um, enough about that, let's add an adjustment and give some balance to our bot user. Now here we will actually need a UID of that user. So before we go here, let's go to user directory. And this is our uh, user for bot. So let's copy that and go back to our adjustments right here. Add new, uh, we go UID right here, reason bot balance currency we'll give it usd category um, i like to have this one as an uh, as far as i remember incentive let's give it some amount asset code 201 create so it's created now we have to also accept it now that is done let's add another one uh, and i'll call it bot balance once again now this time I'll give it some Ethereum balance and I'll give like a hundred, give it a thousand, it's fine, 202 and the same UID. So let's create that adjustment as well and accept it. Right, so now our user should have some balance on his account, which is great. That means that he can actually create 
some orders. So let's actually have a look at that. Uh, yeah, you can see he has some Ethereum and some USD. That's exactly what we want. And let's go to back to trade. And you can see that we have only one market for Ethereum and USD, uh, which is fine. All right. So now let's actually also go to, let's say, Binance. And let's see uh, the rate for Ethereum. So you can see it. it's like so. Okay, so let's create one uh, order to buy Ethereum for price of 100, let's say. And we want like five Ethereum, for example, maybe even 10. Um, we want this order in order to actually start having something in the order book. And that is necessary because um, only when your order book has at least one order, then the bot can start up. And let's also sell some Ethereum for 100,000, let's say, and sell, I uh, know, uh, like 10. 10 Ethereum, for example. Let's, okay, uh, price is too high, maximum price. Okay, so we have to go to our tower as well because I think we have some, um, a bit of a wrong configuration. Let's see. So yeah, max price is a thousand for Ethereum, which is unrealistic, so let's change that. All right. Make sure to play around a little bit with this configuration. You have to get familiar with it as well uh, in order to run your exchanges. So let's do this and sell for Ethereum. Now we have a little bit start for, for the order book, which is great. Uh, so we have balance for our user, which is also awesome. And then our next thing to do is actually to just start up the bot. So let's get into that. All right. Now let's actually go ahead and deploy the bot. In order to do so, we have to go to config, humming bot. And you can see here we have a script that allows you to actually start it up. So let's do that. Okay. I'm sorry, we have to create just logs directory. Right. Now we have also, we also have to pull this image um, for Hummingbot. And in order to do so, you have to create a personal uh, access token and do a Docker login. So how do you do that? You go to your GitLab, uh, I'm sorry, to our GitLab. Uh, then you go to your profile. Uh, actually, in here, you have to go to, I think, a profile. Uh, yep, access tokens. So you create a new access tokens. Go on bot image, read registry. That's all we need. Now let's copy this and let's log in. Okay, I can see that login succeeds. So, okay, now it's actually a pull, pull, pull in the images as well. Uh, so this is going to pull us uh, our humming bot connector image that we're going to use uh, to deploy this humming bot right now. So after this pulls, we will start up the script. And I just wanted to say that any strategies we use here, we do not recommend them to use in production until your business analyst approves them. Uh, we do not, um, we will not be in charge of any risks uh, or anything like that. We usually provide these strategies as a base for our customers and they customize them to their liking. There's plenty of documentation of, about Hummingbot and how to work with their strategies. <clears throat> so you make sure you get hold of that and wrap your head around every possible configuration and how everything works prior to installing anything. Um, all right. Now, before starting the bot, there is one config we need to have a look at. So that's conf, conf global. And here you actually have to provide your domain name. So let's do that. You can search for Mobidax. Yeah. So here, instead of Mobidax.io, we have bitside.eu here as well. Bitside.eu dot eu 
So that's important. And we also have trading pair splitter right here. And uh, now after we've done that, uh, there is another thing that we have to do is we have to actually provide our API keys. So in order to do so, we have to run, uh, we have to run this case. So it says that it doesn't exist, which is fair enough. We also need this, repo uh, this directory as well. So now this should run, which is great. And now you can see this is the sort of UI for our humming bot. And now here um, we need to input all of the parameters. So let's search for help. And what we need to do here is we need to create config. Config. Now you need to provide the password for this config and make sure you remember this password. Uh, because we will need it later on. I'm going to create a simple one here, um, just in case, you know. Uh, yeah, so it's like this. Pure market making. Import previous or create new ones. Import. Let's do like this. Okay, now this is the step where we need to provide our API key, the one that we created previously. So let's do that. I have it saved right here. Right, and then API secret. Right. Okay. So with that, we have successfully provided the config uh, and we can close this. So let's exit. Okay, perfect. Now this, this has created uh, for us encrypted API key and API secret. Now, the next thing we have to do <clears throat> is we have to open up our script and you can see here we have config password, right? So if you go right here, you can see that there is config password and we need to change that because uh, for the password that we entered for this uh, particular config. And I did warn you that you have to remember it. So if you didn't, that's your fault. Uh, now I will provide this password and then using this script we'll spin up our bots. All right, let's start them. Okay, I think I already have someone, some bots running, do I? This is PCO. Uh, do I have any bots? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, okay, I think I might have some stopped ones. Yep, I need to actually kill these. RM, I think that's how it works. Yeah, okay, cool. So I need to remove this. I accidentally spin up a couple of bots. So let's just remove them because they are exited, but I need to completely remove them. All right, now this should start up our script. Yep, starting up the script and we'll go back here to see whether this has any effects on our platform. So it's only one bot. Yep, guys, have a look at that. Isn't that great? So this is how, our, how it all works. Now, we also gonna have three instances with three strategies. You can see those strategies in details, just open up the config files in this repository and you can study them and make sure that you understand each parameter. You can configure your own ones. It's up to you uh, how far you take it. And you can see right here, we already have live trades and live order book updates and we provide some 
market making for our platform. And that is great, I, I think. Now we'll also have another container spin up right here. And uh, yeah, so you can see, and we can do actually Docker PS, and you can see we have three bots running, which is perfect. Uh, and also make uh, like, just for your knowledge, the logs are in this folder, so you can actually see them in case you have any problems with spinning up your bots. Uh, you can always refer to the log files right here and you can see uh, whatever the bot was doing at any particular moment in time. And let's just look at that beauty once again and be proud of ourselves. So we can also switch our candlestick to a bit more frequent one and just observe. Well, everyone, this brings us to the finale, the eighth and final video in this tutorial video series. Congratulations, you reached your goal of deploying your own feature-rich cloud-hosted blockchain-supporting centralized cryptocurrency trading platform. You have come a long way and deserve to feel amazing. Now you might be thinking, what's next? Let me tell you what we have in store for you. Mobidex team will continue to generate great and useful content on topics related to deployment, customization and maintenance of your trading platform. You probably already know, but Mobidex is a software product built around the same backend components as the ones used in this tutorial. The stack you are running today is the most basic version of the stack you can run, basically the MVP but it has all you might need to utilize this software for commercial purposes. We made it simple and easy for you to kickstart your business. Hope that you enjoy. Now, if you're curious about Mobidax, here is a quick message about who we are if you don't already know. First, we are completely compatible with open source PCO, OpenDAX and Openware subscription-based crypto and fiat trading platforms as the front end for mobile applications. But now we are so much more. Imagine a completely upgraded front-end for the end user written in Flutter by Google. Flutter allowed us to maintain web, iOS and Android front-ends and applications from a single codebase. If you know how huge this is, you know. If not, we discuss this in another video. Now that you've used Tower Admin Panel, you can probably already feel how clunky it is and limitations it has. Well, that's another part of Mobidex, Setter Admin Panel. Setter takes into account all the minuses of Tower and fixes them. We have a video coming uh, soon for this as well. Our team replaced the most troublesome parts of this stack as we continue to improve it. As I mentioned earlier, we plan on producing a lot more great content, so stick with us. Hit the like for this video and subscribe. And please join our Telegram channel and get a feel of what it means to have your questions answered by a community that cares about helping. With love for open source, see you next time.